All right, today's video should be a fun one, not just because we get to play with some pretty cool hardware, but because we get to do an experiment that I've wanted to do for a few months now. Let's dive in. Need a Windows or Office key but don't want to pay retail? MMORC.com has all the best deals and a sweet discount for BPS Customs viewers. Just head over to the site link below and enter code BAN35 for 35% off your order total, meaning you could snag Windows 10 Home for under 10 bucks. Fill out your email and place your order and then click the extract code button at the top of the page. From there, it's as easy as heading to your Windows activation settings and inputting your shiny new key. For more information, head to MMORC.com or check out the links below. So a few months ago, Adobe updated Premiere Pro to use hardware acceleration when exporting your video files. Now, this might not seem like such a huge deal. After all, it always used hardware acceleration to some extent. However, when it came to exporting video files, it used to be solely dependent on your CPU. Now it takes full advantage of NVIDIA CUDA cores, making the exports a lot shorter and a lot more efficient for basically every single project. What I've wanted to do and what I've wanted to find out ever since they made this change was, does it even really matter what kind of CPU you have right now, as long as you have a pretty beastly GPU in your system. So this stuff on the table right here is gonna be for a 4K video editing machine, or two machines, actually. The first thing that we're gonna build is your traditional high-powered, high CPU core count build. So we're gonna start off with AMD's Ryzen 9 3950X. I'm sure by now you guys know this chip, 16 cores, 32 threads. It is an absolute monster for basically everything that you want to do with a build in 2020. We're going to pair it with the Zotac Amp Extreme version of the RTX 2080 Ti. Now, there's been a lot of rumors circulating about NVIDIA's 30 series, but until we actually see those cards on the market, this is still pretty much as fast as you're gonna get for any kind of consumer grade system. We're gonna put our 3950X in the X570 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. I've used this motherboard before on the channel. It's excellent, it's fully featured, it looks really good. I've never had any stability issues with it at all. And we're gonna populate all of our DIMM slots with PNY's new Accelerate memory. Now, they sent me four individual ones, but you could buy these in any number of configurations. They sent me four eight gig dims, they're new, they have RGB on the top, they look pretty cool, and we're gonna try them out today. So that'll give us a full complement of memory. 32 gigs is, I think, what I would consider to be the minimum for dealing with large 4K video projects, but for the purposes of our build, I think this will do just fine. We're also gonna use some new storage from PNY. This is their Accelerate M.2 SSD. This is an NVMe drive, speeds of 3500 read, 3000 write five-year warranty on this bad boy. And although it is not Gen 4, which we could use in a video editing machine, especially with X570, it's still gonna be plenty fast and shouldn't hamper our video editing in any way. Then we're gonna check out some really cool new fans from Lee and Lee. These are their Unifan SL120s. I got this three pack here with a controller and I also have three more of them. So we have six total Unifans. We're gonna do them basically in setups of two groups of three. So once you guys check out the build montage that's coming up soon, you'll see how these function. We saw these at CES. They use a one connection setup. So you, you, although you do need PWM and RGB signal going to the controller, once you do that with one fan, you could basically hook all the rest of the fans together and it just becomes one single unit. They are really cool and I think that uh, they're gonna add a little bit of spice to our build today. We're also gonna be using another new product from Lee and Lee. This is the Galahad AIO360. It is an Asetek based design, but they have implemented a couple of different changes. The palm top looks completely different and the whole unit is silver. So that should look pretty cool in our build and go along with the color scheme of our motherboard and our case, which is also from Lee and Lee. I don't have it here on the table, but it is the white version of the original PC-011 Dynamic. So not the XL version, but still a great case, gonna provide plenty of room for all of our parts. And then power is gonna be provided by a CB1050 from Inwin. Now, this is probably a little bit overkill for what we're doing here today. However, it is still a really good unit, 80 plus platinum rated, fully modular power supply. 
I think honestly, if you were building this at home and you wanted to put a more appropriate power supply in here, you'd probably go with something like a 750 or 850 watt unit. You'd be just fine with that. Now, what is our experiment gonna be? Well, I'm gonna do this build. We're gonna build with the 3950X first and we're gonna leave the 2080 Ti in the system. We're gonna run some tests, including video exporting in Adobe Premiere. Then we're gonna swap out the CPU for a Ryzen 5 3600X and rerun our video exporting tests. We're gonna see if you actually need a 16 core chip in your video editing PC in order to do proper editing and exporting. And if a six core 12 thread chip will do just about the same because Premiere is leaning so heavily now on hardware encoding from the GPU. My thoughts are that although I think maybe timeline scrubbing might suffer a little bit with the six core chip versus the 16 core chip, I think export times are gonna be remarkably similar. But I haven't tested this at all, so I could end up being completely wrong. But the only way to know is to put everything together. What I'm gonna try to do is build the system first, throw on Adobe Premiere, export a few videos, check out the performance, and then I'll talk to you guys, and then we'll swap in the Ryzen 5. Seems like a lot of work we gotta do today, so let's get to it. All right guys, so we've run all of our regular standard gaming benchmarks and 
absolutely no surprises here. This system is an absolute beast when it comes to gaming. Of course it would be with a 16 core processor and a 2080 Ti, we really wouldn't expect any less. But some frame rates in some games were still under that 60 FPS magic number, but all of our testing was run at ultra settings and 4K resolution. So even though we had some games like Doom Eternal and Far Cry New Dawn running really well and running above that 60 FPS cap, Games like Ghost Recon Wildlands and even some scenes in Shadow of the Tomb Raider really still couldn't crack 60 FPS and that's okay. Those can benchmarks are actually harder to run than the actual games themselves. And as a result, those are just kind of a gauge, a point of comparison when looking at two or three or four different graphics cards. It's a, a good way to use a CAN setting to see which is more powerful. They don't necessarily represent real world gaming performance because 4K gaming is a reality with this kind of a setup, uh, even though it isn't something that a lot of people are actually doing right now. So the next thing that we wanna talk about though is the actual point of this build, and that is video editing. So we're gonna do our initial export using our 3950X. I'm also gonna play around with some timeline scrubbing, some effects and stuff like that. What we're actually doing is we're exporting one of my old videos. This is the September 2019 monthly build. Uh, and I'm also gonna do the same thing on my main video editing rig, which is a 3960X system with 128 gigs of RAM. So we'll see which one is better, and then we'll swap over to the 3600X and see if there are any differences while using Premiere. All right, we have some results for you, and they are a little different than we initially expected, at least what I initially expected. First of all, I tested this export on my main editing system and it rendered this out in six minutes and 13 seconds. That is a 24 core Threadripper 3 3960X based system with an RTX 2080. So not a 2080 Ti. And I think that's gonna make a huge difference here because the 3950X system that we just built with a 2080 Ti I'll put the same 4K video file in five minutes and one second. Quite a difference. When we swapped over to the 3600X, however, even the 2080 Ti's brute strength could not overcome the lack of cores, as it took seven minutes and one second for this system to do the same project. Also, there was a noticeable difference in timeline scrubbing, effects, and generally working within the Premiere ecosystem with the 3600X versus either the 3950X or the 3960X. So the 3950X was close enough in core count to the 3960X where the extra horsepower from the 2080 Ti was able to pull it ahead of my main editing system with the 2080 but the 3600X is six cores, quite the deficiency, and even the 2080 Ti wasn't able to make up that kind of ground. Now just talking about this build itself, I may have accidentally just put together one of the most beautiful systems that I've ever built on the channel. That wasn't the goal, clearly I wanted things to match when I put up this parts list, but I wasn't expecting it to come out this nice. This looks amazing, I'm super happy with it. Maybe it might even be cool to change this GPU out for a white one, but even as is, I think this looks great. Yes, we left all the colors on rainbow, whatever. You guys can change them if you want, but everything really matched well together. And the PCO11 Dynamic, you know what? There is a reason why this is maybe one of the most popular cases of all time at this point. It comes in black, it comes in white, it's super easy to build in, the airflow is good. And I mean, look at it, just looks great. It also paired really well with Lee and Lee's new Unifans, which I was really happy about. They, they seem to work really well, I had no problems. Uh, they snapped together really easily. And even though they're not the first to market with something like this, Cooler Master actually put out a product last year where you could buy two or three fans in one unit the Unifans are a lot more flexible. Not only do they look a lot better, but you can use one of them, two of them, three, four, five, six, seven, however many you want, or if you have a case that holds that many in a row. 
But, you know, four isn't an unreasonable amount, and you can certainly do that with the Unifans. Also, the Galahad AIO. Uh, I threw this little magnetic chip on here because this comes in the packaging as well if you want to have a brand agnostic system going on. Uh, but uh, I may have been wrong about it being an Asetek unit. The uh, cold plate looks different. The attaching mechanism is different. Um, and the uh, the fittings look a little different than typical Asetek. To be honest, it doesn't really matter if it's Asetek or not. It's still a good performing, good looking cooler. And our other new hardware also performed well. We had no problem enabling XMP on our memory. Uh, the PNY SSD also super fast. And uh, yeah, this was just a really good system all around. I had really no complaints at all. And I learned a few things along the way. So what do you guys think of doing this kind of a build every once in a while where we're focusing on something that's not necessarily PC gaming? In this case, we're doing video editing and doing some kind of little comparison within this build. I think it worked out really well. Leave me a comment down below on what you guys might wanna see next, what you thought of this build or anything else you might wanna chat about. Also, leave a like or hit that subscribe button or do both of those things or probably both of those things I think are better. Uh, so thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next week.